the president spends a lot of time talking about any of several investigations he is subject to, according to a count by the New York Times, quote, Trump has private, uh, publicly attacked the Russia investigation more than 1,100 times since taking office. That comes out to at least once on 330 days or more than 43 percent of his time in office. Staggering. By our own count, he spent more time on Twitter this week focused on former acting FBI director Andrew McCabe than any other single subject. That includes our seemingly ongoing national emergency at the southern border. And finally, it may say something about our times and this president that he accused the former FBI acting director of treason just last evening, and we didn't even think to mention it on this broadcast. Shannon Pettypiece and Aaron Blake remain here with us. Aaron, there's usually, when you look back at the tweets and learn what you learn uh, in real time, there's usually always a reason for it. And think of this, think about what an awful weekend it was. We now know the Times had called the White House looking for comment on this sweeping piece that was coming out. Uh, it could be that there are McCabe galleys floating around uh, the White House. Often early review copies come out and are Xeroxed, even though that's against the law. And, of course, the 60 Minutes interview with McCabe Sunday night, all set up for the tweet storm we're still kind of living through. Yeah, I think it's tempting to look at the president's uh, fixation on Andrew McCabe in recent days from the standpoint that we usually look through at it from, which is the idea that the president is thin-skinned, that he's lashing out, uh, that he really doesn't like the things that Andrew McCabe is saying. I'm not sure that's actually the case in this situation. If you look at the two things that Andrew McCabe has really confirmed, the two big things that he's confirmed in recent days, one is the idea that there were a officials within the Justice Department who were talking about the 25th Amendment. The other is the opening of the counterintelligence investigation that had been reported via anonymous sources uh, a few weeks ago. I think both of those actually feed into what the president wants the talk to be about, which is the idea that there are forces within the government that are trying to take him down, sometimes using nefarious uh, methods in his estimation. I think that's a much uh, more uh, friendly story storyline for the president than this New York Times story today, which is pretty devastating from top to bottom. And so I think if we look at the fact that the president is still focused on Andrew McCabe, uh, we can't discount the idea that this is something that he actually wants us to be talking about. Aaron, that's really, that's an interesting way of looking at it. And to your point, he is getting air support on the deep state argument on Fox News uh, all evening, every evening. Shannon, from time to time, I ask you about the business of this presidency from the point of view of citizens and taxpayers. How much of the business of the West Wing is proceeding? What can we expect out of this White House? Yeah, well, I mean, right now is an interesting time. I mean, things kind of ground to a halt during the shutdown, and they're just sort of getting their legs back under them. And now, of course, you have this sort of boom, boom, boom of the Mueller investigation and the possibility that Mueller could actually submit a report uh, in the coming weeks. So a lot of us are getting signals could be happening. Uh, so that, again, could grind everything to a halt. I, I mean, a lot of the attention they're trying to turn to foreign policy, and the president's advisors in the past have been good at trying to distract him uh, is particularly towards foreign policy. Let's get prepared for this Kim summit. Let's get prepared for, you know, an international trip to get his focus off of things having to do with, you know, either the SDNY investigation or the Cohen investigation or the Mueller investigation. So that might be a way that they try and pivot his attention. But, I mean, to be honest, a lot of those advisors who would try and keep the president focused on the task at hand are no longer there. Uh, you know, as chief of staff John Kelly, uh, for example. So I'm not really sure how, uh, you know, having a, a summit coming up, having all of this Mueller-related news coming out is going to work for the president. But when you, yes, yeah, step back as a person who wants to see the government get things done, uh, make improvements in your life, uh, as far as domestic policy, uh, there's really little chance of any of that 
happening this year. Um, and once we get past foreign policy, a few initiatives there, uh, any response to the Mueller investigation, all the congressional investigations, I think that's going to suck any sort of oxygen that you had in this White House out. And then, believe it or not, we're going to be in 2020 mode very, very soon from the president's perspective. I mean, for, we're there already, frankly, but things will really ratchet up soon. So, um, yeah, you can kind of forget about any sort of domestic policy goals uh, that could be left for this administration. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.